pioneers of the independent networks. Friends, if you've joined us in the past, you know that each week here on Ping, we bring you the uh, characters, the matches, the organizations that populated the Mid-Atlantic area from the 1980s to the early 2000s, and we bring those to you so that you can relive those incredible memories. I'm your host, Ricky Blues, and this week we're being joined by a very special guest. I'll introduce that guest as one of my longest and dearest friends, the malevolent Hack Myers. Malevolent. I haven't heard that in a while there, uh, Hard Rock Ricky Blues. <laughs> <laughs> man, it is great to be here with Penn, man. I, I am so blessed to know that you have something like this going on. Pioneers of independent wrestling is like a genius idea. I think it's good that uh, we can talk about all the old school stuff with Maryland wrestling in the, the Pennsylvania area and Virginia area. It's great to uh, actually be a part of this. I'm, I'm glad that you invited me on. And we're so happy to have you here, Hack. Uh, again, one of the original pioneers in the Mid-Atlantic area, Hack Myers, and we're going to get into just a little bit about his career as we go through today. So welcome, fans. Thanks for having me. Now at Penn, we have ourselves what we like to refer to as a time machine. And we, we've often said this, Hack, by using the phrase, we're going to take that proverbial stroll down concussion lane. <laughs> and that's exactly where we're going to go this week. We're going to go back to 1989, 1990, and the beginnings of Don Havlin in the wrestling business. Because a lot of folks don't realize that Hack Myers, the Ultimate Shaw, and Ricky Blues, classmates. Absolutely. In the uh, what became the Monster Factory. So, Hack, we're going to take you back to that it time. It was like Beastmakers at the time? Beastmakers. Wow. 1989. That's going back. That's it's, going back. That is. Oh, man. Those days. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of it is... Uh, I love wrestling my, my entire life. I remember having the action figures laying on my bed. I made my own. My dad actually made a uh, a wrestling ring for me uh, out of wood and all this stuff. So it had some string and like I was the guy, that, the kid that was in the in the bed playing with uh, my Nikolai Volkov and my Iron Sheik and my Hulk Hogan. So I love wrestling at an early age. And uh, I remember going to the Baltimore Arena and just like with the old NWA and. You know, we didn't really, WWE was here, but I, I was more of an NWA guy for some reason as a kid. Now, I did like my Superfly Jimmy Snookas and the Don Morocco's of the WWE, Greg Valentine's, but like I was more into, and maybe because I was a fat kid, yeah, you know, imagine that, me being a fat kid, but I was a big Dusty Rhodes fan, and you know, when that elbow came and the people were, whoo, whoo, I lived for, I loved that as a child. I miss those days. Like, I miss being that fan. But like going to the arena and stuff, I had the opportunity to like to run across a lot of guys. And one of the guys from Maryland was, uh, as Dusty Rhodes would say, Dirty Red, Bobby Starr, Playboy himself. <laughs> but you know, guys like that, and we all got together, and um, you know, it was just it was just a, a lot of fun back then. I remember Bob, and he had this uh, the hit pack. You know, you had the Zubas on in the hit pack, and Bob would have a calendar. And I don't even know if he was booked on half the shows he had in the calendar, but he's just, and there would be a ton of dates, and I don't know how many he was actually working, but there were so many dates on there. But it was just fun to have that environment of being around a group of guys that like wrestling as much as I did, and we talked about just the whole, just getting involved. I love wrestling. It's, it's always been in my blood. It's in my heart. And those early days are gone, and, and I remember taking so many bumps early on that we used to do the handstand flip bump, and I... I got so tired at one point, I wanted to go do it, and I just like, it looked like a quarterback getting sacked. I just landed right on my shoulder, but I, I never quit. You know, I just loved it so much, and I, and I miss those days. I love those days, and any of the young uh, guys out there now that are, that are coming up and, and want to be a part of wrestling, I hope that you enjoy it and love it as much as I have and still do. Right, and that's extremely important, and you, and you, in saying that, heck, you're mentioning one thing, and I think folks will never know that looking at us. Right. We grew up together. Now, not just in the business, but oh, the same we grew up. We grew up. I remember we used to play football up on uh, Potsy Callahan Hill. Yeah. I mean, we, we have a lot of history together. And uh, it was a very shocking and surprising thing when I showed up at the – because I had no idea that you had the love of wrestling. Right. I did. And I remember going to uh, Barry Hardy. And uh, I don't re remember exactly. Maybe it was – through Bob Starr that I knew that, Bob, uh, that Barry had had a school. Mm -hmm. But when I, the very first time I show up there, who's who's in the ring with this skinny kid going by the name of Hard Rock Ricky Blues and it was one of my better friends from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like a, um, a great thing because I was nervous as heck. 
And, um, you know, here we had this young, cocky guy by the name of Hard Rock Ricky Blues in there. And he, I mean, I'm only kidding about the cocky <laughs> part. But, but he knew his stuff a little more than I did. He had, he had been around um, just a little, a bit. little bit before I had. But it was enough to get me started. So I was very much appreciative of that. Well, and, and we did. And we really cut our teeth together because, yep, I was in a few months ahead of you. But it wasn't. It wasn't as organized as what it became in 1990 because they went from beast makers where and back then it was guys like it was Sid Garrison right, right. we're gonna talk about yeah. Sid, Sid a little bit because he's very instrumental for, oh, absolutely. for me yeah absolutely and guys like Bubba Monroe um, Agent Orange folks oh, that, that sure. were really the cornerstones and it was kind of loosely put together and we were doing shows and they were running the school. Yes. But then Larry Sharp steps oh, yeah. Monster in. Monster Factory come in. Was and that 1991? That was 1990. 1990. And wow. it becomes the Monster Factory and we actually become the first graduating class. Wow. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's been, it right. been you, Ed Hall, myself, Bill Cook, who was sexy Steve Valentino. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And you had a, there was guys that had been working already, but I remember at that era, you had um, Dave the Surgeon, the right, Surgeon, Dave Coleman, you had, yeah. uh, Coleman, you had Sledgehammer McGill, um, quite a few guys, Axel Rotten. Axel, right. And Axel, Axel we, we both tip our hat to Axel, and in Absolutely. private we always, we always talk about it because Axel was one of those guys that had the psychology down and, and he Absolutely. lived he this lived business the every day. He was a, he was a, a, a young guy mm -hmm. that was a big guy. Called himself from England, mm -hmm. had purple hair, or pinkish hair, purple or whatever, and he was believable. And with an actual living part of that and understanding it, he was trained by Jim Leon. Jim, Jim Leon, Leon was one of the guys, and that was on North Avenue. Right, and the North most Avenue. ironic you thing, had AJ Fritzel and right. a couple of those guys. And yeah. Bob Starr was Bob Starr, Starr was down Dirty there. Ray. And, and the funny thing about North Avenue is that our neighborhood that we grew up in, right. we are talking. One or two city blocks away from where we were, yep. we never knew it. Never knew it. Wound up having to, to, to travel 40 or 50 miles, which is very, in, in, in that day, was not much, not to go to the, the wrestling school. But they had it. And Axel uh, was one of those guys that had psychology down pat. Absolutely. And he was able to teach us. So that's Absolutely. why we always look at, 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 at Axel and those early days and understanding psychology. And what we mean by psychology is knowing what went where and why. That's important for you young he guys. He knew how to draw attention. Right. No matter what the situation was. And a lot of the guys that were starting out around that time or was around that time, they knew it. They knew Axel could draw attention and people flocked to Axel. I was one of those guys. I was one of those guys that was wanting to learn off Axel. I remember ref the referee, Jeff Jones, uh, who is now part of Ring of Honor, I believe. But mm -hmm. uh, he clicked up with Axel. You had um, Johnny Lawler, who became Ian yeah, Rotten. Right. Um, so Axel at the time, for me, helped me a lot in the early years. Well, and a lot of people uh, do tip their hat to Axel and give him credit. Uh, and, and rightfully so. He, he's, he's done a, a good job paying it forward. He's helped right. out a lot. Now, in one way, it, obviously, he helps himself out, but, but we Absolutely. all do. That's, that's the nature of the business, but he's paid it forward, and which is good. Absolutely. Now, you said a couple things there, Hack, that I want to uh, stay on our, or on our uh, way back machine, our time machine. Okay. You talked about the mask and TV. Okay, let's just go back to the, the Maryland TV with, um, I think that was UIW, right? <laughs> that was UIW. Well, okay. the first go round was ASWA. With ASWA. Our, with our try with okay. ESPN, and we wound up running right. like six or seven shows. Now, mind you, the mask was a Red Ranger mask, <laughs> and, and I, I, I think I got it from this guy. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think it was given to me from him. No, you know, i tell you exactly where it come from. Where's that? It's, you, if you think Bob Starr had a million gimmicks, Beach Boy Vinny really? had a million mask gimmicks, and that's where it comes from. Oh, well, thank you, Vinny. Vinny. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and so we move into UIW, UIW, which is on local channel thirteen in Baltimore. Right. And you, you come. We, we're graduated out of school. I've got my gimmick at that time. I'm doing Watsumi. I'm under the hood. Right. And you're they're developing you. You're a bigger guy. They get they go to you. With Didn't the, have a clue. Right. Thank God I was under a mask. <laughs> which uh, which is not uh, a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. It's, <laughs> you know, um, I was the guy that you would go and get up and use the restroom. You know, and you'd come back and like <laughs> wish it was over. But you know, I I, I don't take any of it back. I learned can't. from all that stuff. So you young guys out there. Um, that are that are watching this right now, it doesn't matter. 
just get get something under your belt because yeah. I am so blessed to have those days where I wore that mask and, and jobbed out to everybody because it was a learning experience no matter what the situation is. Um, and I'm, I, I, I'm grateful for all those days. Think about this, Hack. Guys today don't realize how important what we did was because we were on a local sure. television. It's impossible to get local television now unless you're on a uh, public television, which, you know, that, that, that's a whole different aspect. This is before the explosion of the cable gods. And right, right, right. It, was, it was very prestigious. And to be put in front of a few thousand people and to be seen throughout your state sure. was an incredible experience because you learned so much. You learned ring presence. You learned, you learned the, the movements of the business. You learned how to talk. You learned Absolutely. how to cut a promo. Absolutely. The time constraints that you would use you know, for matches, the time constraints that you would use for promo. You learned so much. All very important. And, and, All and very important. Exactly. And guys today don't have that learning experience. They, they missed some of that. And, and knock on wood, we were fortunate. That was that was an incredible experience. Absolutely, I, and I and I I love the fact that's that's a very good point because I wound up observing everything, even mm -hmm. if it was uh, wrong. It was never a bad thing to get the right way and the wrong way because the wrong way always led you to the right way. Hopefully, yep. And uh, it did for me, uh, and that's only because when somebody saw me doing things wrong, they corrected me on it. So those UIW days. AJ Fritzord, I remember, gave me a, and Axel talks about this still, it was a big thing, he gave me a belly to back. And as a big guy, you know, I, I went down and jumped mm -hmm. as high as I could. And I remember I went over top of his head, and the way I landed, I mean, AJ came and gave me a big hug. And I was like, man, that was awesome, that was awesome. Because that's all, you know, people remember that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, some people remember certain things like that. And that was like a, a great thing for me, man. I, so what we're going to do now, fans, is we're going to actually jump back into time, into those UIW TV days, and let's take a look at a compilation, a couple little matches that were the founding stones for what would later become Hack Myers. <laughs> oh, God help us all. <laughs> Reminds me of an Easter egg, you know. I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, just, just have to wonder what what kind of individual this is. Claims he's a ladies man and wears the pink tights, and right away Black Ranger's got the upper hand. Comes in and takes Steve right off his feet. Nah, that confidence might can, be. Uh, but, uh, Black Ranger's got some size to him. He powered him over with that one. Sexy Steve, Steve Steve's Valentino. looking around. Even though that victory was tainted, Ed, it was a victory yeah, nonetheless. That's, that's exactly right. In With the books, it does not change the average. That be coming up oh. is so important. Again, See, he thought, frustration. I think, I think this is his problem now. He figures Joey. he got the victory over Kurt Dredd. It's all going to be easy that's, here from now. You know, these guys are intimidated. What that, is that? It's not the case here in what the UIW. That? Nothing. I think that was called the Sexy Steve Strut. The Sexy Steve Something. Strut. I don't know. Okay. Steve, oh, Steve had the presence of mind to drop down there and nails him with a hard close line. <laughs> kind of reminded me of the silly Samba Samba, Samba, but uh, I don't know. Almost a two count there. 
And a double fist down on right the head. Today. It goes for a cover on Black Ranger, no. Black Ranger still got a lot Steve left. Carlo I don't know where counts. Steve thinks he's got enough on him at this point to get the pinball. Drop kick. I think he might have grazed him. I, I couldn't tell from our vantage point. He got it up there. He didn't quite get all of it, but Something he got enough to put him down. Last. Sometimes those are the worst kind, too, the ones that don't hit yeah, you the way they expect it to. Just trying to duck out of the way of the thing, you fall down and end up hitting your head or something. Takes it back into the corner. Irish whip charges in with a hard elbow. Sexy Steve Valentino. And there he goes. He's his stuff against the Black Ranger. But the only thing is, he should be moving in on his man, taking care of business and getting out of the way. These ladies will be here all night. Really? He can worry about who uh, his date's going to be after the show, you know? Yeah, well, and I don't, somehow I don't think there's any woman in this room that's of low enough taste to, to go out with a sexy Steve Valentino. I mean, you know. I know I would. I wouldn't want to be just another disappointed woman, you know? No. I, that's, that's, uh, but anyhow. He'll be a two-minute brother when it comes to that, but. Uh, there he goes for the choke. Taking his time again, instead of putting his man away. Leg drop, nice maneuver. Sexy Steve. Sloppy cover, come on, he barely has any weight on him. Mm. Again, that cockiness with that killer hit Kirk Dredd, that victory he got. Controversial oh. as it may have been, have been. And then we celebrated after that as he chokes, I believe, couldn't tell. The referee, if he reaches five, these guys have got to realize, I know from first hand, once you read that five, reach that five, you're out of there. I don't understand Steve here. He's just he's just a plan the man. You know, he should be getting the victory here and, and he's just playing with him he now. Wants to, to showing off. If that's what you want to call it, particularly I don't care for it. You should get out and beat the man and be done with it here. Scathing shot in the corner, but take the skin right off of you. Now he's got got Black Ranger down on the mat. Kicking hard. It's gonna there he goes. No, I don't uh, think so. That's not smart. I mean, no, to no. Uh, yell at the fans. I'm like sorry, that. but just take sh his physical build isn't the type that appeals to me, if you know what I mean. Right. So I, I don't want none of that. You know, I, it's bad enough I have to sit here and watch this. It does kind of make you sick to the stomach, but that'll make you sick anywhere as he uh, drives that elbow once again. Another cover. <laughs> oh, oh! Black Ranger could be getting a second wind here as he threw Steve off without too much problem. Steve better. Uh, while well, he's up here, Could body swim. Power slam, but there he goes to another pose. See, he's trying to pick up women again. I just don't, I don't see where he figures it's going to take. Uh, there him he anywhere. goes. And there he goes with that nonsense. Chugging his cheeks. Yeah. The trouble but, uh, is, he thinks it's great, but then women are laughing at him. So I don't know why he keeps doing it every week. You know? Another cover on Black Ranger. Black Ranger's uh, a <laughs> Black Ranger hasn't had a lot of offense at this point, but then he's done. Look, Here see, he's arguing with the ref at the same time while he chokes. He knows every trick in the book. Oh, no. He didn't mean he it. He didn't mean it. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. We Say your see. prayers, buddy. Uh, Sexy Steve Valentino, nonetheless. Well, you know, they have the three biggest lies in the world, and we won't go into them here. No. Uh, nonetheless, he is a tough competitor, someone that... uh. You're going to have to get by before you can get to that uh, tournament. Well, here he goes at the top of the rope. Now, I'm hoping he's going to finish the man here because sooner or later. Oh, oh. way up there. Flying cross body block. Three, that's, that's it. He sexy got Steve him. showed me something I haven't seen. All right, let's now, Hack, we've covered a lot of material this week, but we've only just begun. Matter of fact, we've only talked about maybe two years into your, your professional sure. career. And some of those moments, I actually had one eye covered. It was like kind of watching a horror movie, but, <laughs> but it was good to see some of the old stuff. It around. absolutely is. It, it makes the juices flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue this episode next week. So we're hoping that you're going to join us as we continue this stroll down concussion lane and bring you some more of the ultimate shot, Hack Myers. Awesome.